Welcome to the e-commerce coffee break podcast. In today's episode, we discuss the strategic approach to remove negative Amazon reviews the right way. Joining me on the show is Dan Coleman, Chief Revenue Officer at TraceFuse.ai. So let's dive right into it. This is the e-commerce coffee break. A top-rated Shopify growth podcast dedicated to Shopify merchants and business owners looking to grow their online stores. Learn how to survive in the fast-changing e-commerce world with your host, Klaus Lauter, and get marketing advice you can't find on Google. Welcome, welcome, welcome to, to the, the show. show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce Coffee Break podcast. Today, we want to talk about Amazon. Specifically, we want to find out a strategic approach to remove negative Amazon reviews the right way focus on the right way. Joining me on the show today is Danon Coleman. He is the Chief Revenue Officer at TraceFuse.ai, a service that helps Amazon sellers by removing negative product reviews that violate Amazon's guideline. He's passionate about supporting sellers and making a real impact. Danon has co-founded Ecom Triage, a consulting firm focusing on improving ROI and helps lead wizards of Ecom Tampa Bay, we're talking about this as well, the largest Ecom seller or Amazon seller meetup group in the world. So let's welcome him to the show. Hey, Danon, how are you today? Good, Klaus. Thanks for having me on the show. Much, much appreciated. Happy to be here. Yeah, let's talk Amazon. Let's talk about reviews. Um, obviously, no one wants to have negative reviews, but yep. there's also good reasons to have negative reviews. Yes. Um, give me a good overview of what reviews actually stand for and what the approach, the right approach is to handle them. Cool. So, you know, obviously, you don't want a whole bunch of one star reviews. Uh, and based on our what we've looked at across probably hundreds of thousands of reviews at this point is that a single one star holds roughly the same weight as 10 five stars. It's seven to seven to 15, but an average of 10, right? So if you ask me, that weight rating is sorely, sorely off, right? It becomes so easy for anyone to just drop a one star. And you can, if you get a competitor that does this, and this happens all the time, unfortunately, it only takes one or two one stars to completely kill a launch. Right. So you can be sitting at a 4.8, 4.9 star, whatever, and you get two one stars and you go straight down to a 4.0. And that kills your launch, that kills your conversion rate. You'll lose anywhere between 25 to 50% on average if you go from a 4.3 rating to a 4.2, because you go from that four and a half star to a four star. Right. And so that that just that half star is technically responsible for up to 50% of your sales, right? So having some three stars, maybe a couple of two stars, isn't so bad. If you've got, you know, a hundred reviews and they're all five stars, buyers are suspicious. But if you've got a few threes and twos and maybe a one star here or there, then buyers will think it's more of a legitimate product and a legitimate reviews, right? Because everybody knows that there's somebody out there that has, how do I put this politely? Ah, uh, forget about it. Everyone knows there's people out <laughs> here that are assholes that all they want to do is crush everything around them. Right. You know? And, and so they take that into consideration when they're looking at the reviews and they go, cool. The majority, the vast majority of these reviews, they all say the same thing. They all praise the same thing. I'll buy this too. Right. I've actually got customers that said, yeah, I know that that three star violates, but don't remove that one. So I'll have to manually mark that one as compliant in our system so we don't go after it because they actually want that one there. No, it makes total sense. And I think what, what you just said is you want to have a, a, a real view of people. Yeah, if they're keyboard warriors or not, uh, not everyone might be <laughs> actually warriors, happy, yeah. happy with your product. That can happen. Um, but what you mentioned is that competitors use the feature as yeah. a tool to harm you, and that happens more often than people think. Um, yes. Obviously, you need to have some kind of tool, some kind of strategy to deal with that, and that's where um, removing negative reviews come in. And obviously. Um, you should not be able to remove anything to your liking. So there are some Correct. rules and guidelines around this from Amazon. Tell me, how does that look like? Yeah, so anybody can do a search for 
Amazon community guidelines, right? And what you want to pay specific attention to is a section called what's not allowed. And there's a whole list in there of what's not allowed to be in a review. Now, as you can imagine, I've gone on a deep, deep dive into Amazon's uh, policies and uh and all of their articles and stuff like that about reviews. So I've managed to locate, I think, nine different policies or articles on Amazon. Some of them are public. Some of them are behind the login uh, wall. So you have to be logged into a Seller Central account to be able to see them. Mm -hmm. But they basically say that the purpose of the review is to assist a potential buyer to make a buying decision. That's the whole, that's the integrity of the reviews. It's okay to leave your opinions. It's okay to tell people why it didn't work, why you think it didn't work. It's not okay to slander the product, to have personal information, to have foul language, to have competitor information. And by the way, having competitor information doesn't necessarily mean that you can't have, you can't mention a competitor product. You can even put a link, an Amazon link to a competitor product in a listing and i'll go a little bit more into that on a genius Jeez. thing that i saw but i think it's mostly you can't talk about an amazon competitor right mm -hmm. even though that's not how it was written but just based on experience any almost any review that we've submitted where we go this is clearly talking about a competitor that's not what this is this is this is supposed to be a, a review on this product. Amazon's like, no, no, that's their opinion. It's fine. But if you if they talk about Target, well, we can cite Different the story. same thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's a lot of things you can't talk about, and that's what it's supposed to be like, right? Now, Amazon does not exactly police their reviews. Sure. We all get that email occasionally where it says, hey, we removed a review. It was connected to something that we feel is fraudulent. They tell you the ASIN, but they do not tell you what the star rating was. They don't tell you what the review was. They don't tell you any, give you any other data that's actually valuable. And I find, because sometimes we get these forwarded to us by our customers, the majority of the time, it's not a one, two, or three star that got removed. It was a four or a five star. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's kind of interesting that they remove a five star review and leave the one star review in there. Now, when you look at bad reviews, um, how do you go through the list or on, on what kind of uh, markers do you decide to flag this for removal? Our Bible on this is Amazon's community guidelines. So mm -hmm. we just go, we basically what we did is we developed a prompt uh, and kept developing a prompt on GPT to take the review and compare it to Amazon's community guidelines and say, is this review in violation? And it turns out somewhere around 30, 40% of the reviews that are out there, critical reviews are in violation in some way, but that doesn't mean that Amazon's going to remove them necessarily. So TraceFuse's removal rate of across all of your critical reviews is between five and 15%. So for every hundred reviews, critical reviews written, mind you, a, a critical review is a written one, two, or three star review. So we'll be able to remove between five to 15 of those reviews for every hundred critical reviews you have. And mm -hmm. that's that number, that's quite, quite a spread, right? And so there's things like how many reviews do you have? How many products are we going after of yours? How many ASINs? Because the more ASINs, the better the chances we're able to, to find fraudulent reviews, right? Um, and then, and then there's other stuff like how many competitors, what niche are you in, et cetera. There's just so many factors that, that tie into that. So when it comes to like supplements, that's, uh, that's at our 15% because that's a nasty business to be in. Right. So there's just tons of fraud, uh, fraudulent reviews and supplements. So that those ones, we can get a lot more removed. Okay, kind of interesting. So you, you mentioned before that negative reviews have a massive impact on clicks, on sales and everything. Yeah. Can you give me some success stories or case studies of businesses that you helped with removing these? Yeah, so without getting any giving any specifics of, of these, because I obviously can't divulge our customers, but so there's a few few scenarios here. Obviously, 
the ideal scenario is we take someone from a 4.2 to a 4.3. We've definitely done that. In fact, one of our better stories is someone went from a 4.2 to a 4.6. Mathematically, it didn't make sense, but it happened. And we're like, hey, cool. Mm -hmm. Don't ask questions. Thanks, Amazon. Don't know why it went so high, but it did. That's all right by us. Uh, which side thing, Klaus, this does give us uh, a little information to give everyone here is that the math doesn't make sense on the reviews. It just doesn't. Yeah. Anyhow, we won't go. I won't go into that because it's even complicated for my tiny brain to understand. But uh, the math never maths out. So we have plenty of people who have gone from a 4.2 to a 4.3, right? Um, as to what their sales were exactly afterwards, we don't have that information. We only know from what I get told from our customers and success stories is that their uh, conversion rate at times has doubled, but it always improves. And another thing, which is really interesting, I found this super interesting, is that we had a customer, we removed about 30 critical reviews on one of their ASINs, and the star rating didn't change. Mathematically, it should have, but it didn't. So he was still at a 4.2, right? And he he sent me an email saying, hey, you know, my, st my star rating still hasn't changed. Do you know why? I'm like, dude, I it should have. It should You should be at a 4.4 uh, right now. But I asked him, well, what happened to your BSR? Uh, what happened to your conversion rate? What happened to your ad spend? And it turns out the BSR, now BSR is always crazy because it just, it goes wild. You have to look at a trend over time to, to figure out what's going on there. But his BSR improved, meaning it went down. His conversion rate had doubled, even though he was still at the same star rating. So what it's, and, and his PPC cost was down by how much I don't know, but, and, and I realized there are other factors that go into this, but overall, if you looked at the the months bsr was down conversion rate dramatically improved and ppc cost was down and the only thing i can think of is that amazon obviously has an algorithm where there is a rating between the ratings that we see right so i think that if amazon is seeing an increase in the rating overall algorithmically it goes people are loving this product and they're buying it and they're converting let's display it more and then you get more, more conversions, right? Now, that's not a case study for you. That is my assessment based on all the data that I've seen from in bits and pieces from customers. But at the end of the day, we're just we're just all in a marketing game, and we have to employ a little bit of math on like, okay, how much money do I need to spend here to get this? And Amazon runs on ratings and PPC these days. So whatever you can do to improve your ratings and drive that traffic, you'll generally speaking, you'll convert, you know, and you'll make sales and you make profit. If you can, if Amazon hasn't stolen all of your profit from you. It's like we was Amazon and as with other platforms, you're always um, chasing a moving target. They're changing yep. the algorithm all the time. Features come, features go. Yep. And I had an interview earlier today um, where we were talking about um, AI using for ad spend for mm -hmm. Amazon ads. And basically what you just said, there's so many factors that play in and you need to optimize every single bit of it. Might be the conversion rate, the page, might be the ads or in this case optimize the review management now yep. people might be interested in just doing it then by yourself so do it yourself um review handling yeah. what's the risk there what can go wrong no there's no risk there's no risk in this even there's no risk even in in what trace views does we're 100 percent by the books we're just mm -hmm. leveraging what amazon puts out there for any seller to take advantage of the difference between trace views and a seller doing it themselves besides success rate, right? Is the fact that we have spent countless hours locating what teams to go to for what kinds of reviews, where to escalate, how to escalate, what needs to be in the email to Amazon. Do we send an email? Do we go to seller support? Do we go to brand registry? Do we go to fraud? Right. And so it's just endless amounts of testing and data. And I truly mean endless. Like even today, I am testing new methods 
with Amazon to improve our rate because it, for us, Amazon's always changing too, right? So w- one thing that they did, uh, I can't remember. I don't remember when this was, but maybe you do, Klaus. Um, they Amazon made it so that you can only see the last 100 reviews, right? Mm-hmm. I think that may have been years ago. I, I'm not really sure. It's a while ago, yeah. Y- yeah, but that's interesting. Why would Amazon disappear reviews if they factor into what the star rating is why would they hide that data right a last week or something like that they tested cutting that in half only showing 50 and then it came back and back to 100 and then again they made another change where they're hiding it behind hiding reviews behind a login so you have to be logged in to a seller central account uh sorry to a, a buyer account in order to see the reviews. That's fair enough. That makes sense. But this is all the the point is, is that they are always changing things. They are always testing things and they've got servers around the world. So they'll, they might deploy it over here, but not deploy Mm -hmm. it anywhere else. Right. Or they may deploy it and it takes time to propagate to all the servers across the planet. Right. So we have a moving target just as the sellers do I would say the difference is, is that Amazon tells the sellers what's about to change, but that's not necessarily true. But sellers have access to more data on what is changing, has changed, will change than we do. We just get, oh, that's a surprise. That got changed, right? So the risk is is nothing. We just know what to do better than any seller, right? And where to go to. But I'll give you the short version of what you need to do is obviously that report button exists on, on every, um, on every review. Uh, I don't know that that actually does anything. I've seen no evidence to show that it does a damn thing, but always use it. It's there for you. And the community guidelines says to use that button, right? So use that button and then community dash help at amazon.com is apparently the group that is supposed to be responsible for doing this, right? For handling the reviews. Now you can imagine how many emails we've sent them, right? With hundreds of customers and tens of thousands of reviews. And we, by the way, Klaus, uh, we've removed, I think the website says like 12,000. I think we're over 13,000 reviews at this point. So for our customers, but you know, when you are writing community help, Less is more. Write these things like the person who's reading it is English as a second language. Keep it super simple. Only provide facts, no emotion, right? And you make sure that you're giving them what the data is, what the violation is, and what your proposed solution is. Okay. Good tip there. But me being an entrepreneur in e-commerce and digital marketing for a long time, fighting, for instance, with Facebook ads for a long time, same mm-hmm. thing. You have a support email address, goes nowhere, nothing. So, like, so I reckon that speaks completely for using your service because you know how to deal with that, how to address the right department. And at the end of the day, for our listeners, time is money. So before you waste your time and trying to figure it out and probably ending nowhere, um, use a service like TraceViews and have someone on the other side who knows exactly what they do. Now, tell me a little bit about the onboarding process of a new user, of a new customer or client. How does that work? Yeah, easy peasy. Uh, So basically, the easiest way is to go to portal.traceviews.ai and register, throw your merchant token in there, and then we do a free audit. We download all your uh, active products and how many reviews on each one of them. And a lot of people go, well, no, 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 I've got, I've got thousands of reviews or I've got hundreds of reviews, but you don't have that many written reviews. So we're only downloading the quantity of written reviews from there. Now you've got just your list of ASINs and you check the box on the right-hand side and it will give you an assessment of you've chosen this many products. There are this many critical reviews. We think we can remove between five and 15% of those reviews. Um, another way to do it would be just to look on Amazon and, and filter your reviews. And if you've got a hundred reviews, you know that trace views could probably remove around five to 15%. So once you've done that and you've created the service, we create, we generate a unique email that you invite to brand registry and seller central solely 
as user, we don't need access to any of your data other than to manage cases. So for Seller Central, that's literally the permission you say manage cases. For brand registry, you invite that user as a registered agent, which just means the same thing. They can manage cases. So and and then and then we get started. At once you've done that, your work is now done. We take it over from there. We'll download every single one of the, your reviews. We'll run it through our AI. And then before we submit it to Amazon, we manually inspect every single review to make sure that we put it to the right place. So okay. I know our I know our, our company says it is dot AI. I dare say that's the smallest fact factor of our company. Uh, everything is human driven when it comes to case management. Yeah, it makes perfectly sense. I mean, this is a very sensitive area, and uh, yeah. we don't want to make sure that you don't um, wreck an Amazon seller account by doing things that do not comply with Amazon policies. Totally. Yeah. Um, so I, I reckon um, some human um, brain power is, is better at this point. Yeah. Who's your per Who's your perfect customer? What kind of industry vertical do you work best with? Well, okay, so. The perfect customer is a supplement seller that has tons of reviews, and they almost all do, right? Um, and and the reason is is that, and I haven't gone into this really, is that we're able to detect fraudulent reviews. So when we detect fraudulent reviews, we'll wrap that up into one big case and escalate that up to Amazon and say, hey, look, mm -hmm. here's proof of fraud. When we make a claim like that, they've got to take action, right? Because that that can't just go to a computer and the computer says, beep, boop, 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 everything looks fine, you know, and send an automated reply. Um, that That is more serious. So, and some of the things that we're looking for, by the way, are sudden spikes in the number of critical reviews that you get on any given day. So let's say on average you get one and one day, and this is a true, this is actually uh, a, a real life example. So someone, their max over 24 months of sales, their max number of critical reviews was five in one day. Then three days in a row, they had 14, 18, and 20 or 22 or something like that. Basically, 15 to 20 reviews over the course of three days and then back down to normal. That's a huge indicator of, of a review bomb, an attack from a competitor, right? And to, by the way, it doesn't cost a lot to attack a competitor, unfortunately, right? It's baloney, but it's the truth, right? It does not cost a lot to attack a competitor, so, and you can kill them, right? You can kill right. them. So let this, and this is what happens that this is, I think where people are vying for position one, two, three, right? If you spent $10,000 attacking a competitor, well, technically they, you knock them down a peg or two, you take their position. Well, that could be worth $20,000 a day in, in sales revenue, right? So anyhow, we look for that. We look for buyer accounts that all they do is do one stars, and there are plenty of them out there. Um, a picture I use in, in a lot of my meetings is uh, a, a screenshot I took of a buyer account where literally every single title said, do not buy, and every review was arrived broken and dirty, right? <laughs> some, some form of little variation, but the titles were exactly the same on every single review. And every review basically said, arrived broken and dirty, shattered and dirty, dirty and broken. You know, um, if that's not a clear indicator of, of a, a baloney account, then, you know, but and there's, give, give, yeah, clearly and there's gives, tons gives of it them. away. Yeah, exactly. I can imagine. I think yeah. um, obviously e-commerce is highly competitive. If you're in niche like supplement market, it's even more competitive. Yeah. And there's just bad players on the market and they try everything to get the bit of market share that they can yep. squeeze out of it. And I think a service like yours is perfect for that. How does yep. your pricing structure work? How do you charge your clients? Yeah. And so let, let, before I answer that, let me actually just tell, tell you one last thing. We can help any Amazon seller. We can help any Amazon seller. That's just where we have the highest success. But mm -hmm. I, have, I have sellers that have literally 10 critical reviews that come in as a customer. Now, the, I will say full disclosure, for everyone out there, the chances of us getting a review removed on ten critical reviews is lower than it is if you had than it is if you had a thousand. But if we get that review removed, it could be a game changer and completely salvage a product, right? And we do it. We do it all the time. Um, it's just 
the chances of it happening are not as great. So anyone in between, I'm starting and I just want Trace use Trace Views as a uh as insurance to check my reviews on a on a daily basis and file as soon as I get reviews that are in violation to I have 10,000 critical reviews and all I want to do is preserve my 4.3 rating, right? So when it comes to our pricing structure, it's actually quite simple. We are a pay for performance model. You don't pay okay. for any reviews that we're unable to get removed. It doesn't matter how many cases we filed. It doesn't matter any of that. You only pay for the reviews that get removed, right? Now, there is a one-time onboarding fee of $750, but that is the that is one time that is per uh per seller account, right? It doesn't matter how many products or brands you have in that seller account, that's a one-time fee. After that, it's purely performance driven. And we of course keep track of everything that we're working on and everything that's gotten removed with the original links to those and the original data in in those reviews. Mm -hmm. That makes perfect sense. And I think it's money well spent, money well invested, because um, online sellers, specifically if they're omni-channel and sell on different platforms, they just, just don't have the time to track their reviews all the time. And it has yeah. such a massive impact on your, on your revenue, you might just not catch it. And um, then, I don't know, two weeks later, you're losing out on massive sales. Exactly. So I think that's money very well spent. Yeah. Um, so we went through the on onboarding procedure, very straightforward. Is there anything else as we come to the end of the coffee break today that you want to share with our listeners that we haven't covered yet? Providing stellar customer service is your best possible bet on getting someone to change a critical review, right? Mm -hmm. So the top sellers that I've spoken to that have had the, the highest success rate on getting reviews either removed themselves or changed is to provide excellent customer service. So they immediately refund the product. They offer a replacement. Now, and not every, I understand that not everyone can afford to do this, right? And I am not talking about just supplement sellers, by the way. In fact, I'm not talking about them at all, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but the top sellers that get reviews removed, refund it, offer a replacement, ask them if they want a different one of their products, a different model, a different whatever, right? and get into communication with that customer to see what can they do to make their purchase uh, experience better, right? Mm -hmm. That is the best opportunity that you're going to have to get the customer themselves to remove the review. Now, if you have someone that is attacking you, well, they're going to give you some bull crap thing like, oh, no, you know, this... I, I, I bought this frozen pizza and uh, and it nearly killed my dog, right? It's like, okay, well, yeah. all right. I can't help you then because uh, that's bullshit, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But, and let me also say that don't ever, and most people know this, but not everyone does, don't ever ask someone to remove or change a review. That can get your Seller Central account suspended, right? Mm -hmm. But- I'm a big advocate of do everything you can around the lines, right? And say things where the customer can read between the lines that can't actually incriminate you. Go full politician. How could I make your life better? What could I have done to have given you an experience that you would have expected? Can I do that thing for you, right? That sort of thing. I would always do that first. And I'm a seller too, right? I, I've been selling on Amazon for 14 years. Now, today I don't do private label, but I've done private label. I did camping blankets, right? Nobody made mm -hmm. a camping blanket that was long enough for me. I'm only 6'2", right? Uh, but at six foot two, when I'm camping, I like to wrap the blanket under my feet and still have it go over my shoulders. So I made that, right? And I would have people that would buy the blanket, return it as damaged after it was muddy from, with dog hair on it and all kinds of stuff. I'm like, this is bullshit. So I understand for those of you out there, how much emotion a one star, two star review can cause you, but you have to take the higher road and say, maybe that person's guinea pig 
just bit them on the finger before they decided to type this scathing review out. And every time they typed the letter L, it hurt. And so they were in pain the whole time they were typing this review. It's just like, give them the benefit of the, benefit of the doubt and see how can you make their day better. And that will, that you can convert quite a few critical reviews that way. Yeah, I'm glad you highlighted this. Um, I'm an online seller for about eight years, and um, I think everyone listening and has been or is on the journey of uh, an online seller has been in a situation where exactly this email, this review came in, and you are about to bite your nails and go <laughs> ballistic on it. But you're right, oh, yeah. be a politician, be diplomatic. Um, at the end of the day, it's your business, and you want to get the best out of it. And you're, you're spot on. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Think of it as a game of chess and you just need to make the move. Like every sale you make, every review you get, it's a game of chess. Like, okay, well, how can I make a move to shift this person's mental position on me, right? It's a mind game. As yeah. entrepreneurship is overall, exactly. So where can people go and find out more about you? So tracefuse.ai, that's T-R-A-C-E-F-U-S-E dot A-I. That is where you go to get more data about TraceFuse. Portal.TraceFuse.ai is where you go to sign up and get an account. It's uh, There's mm -hmm. no credit card required to start, uh, to start an account and do the audit. You can just throw your merchant token in there. Cool. Daniel, thanks so much for giving an overview why it's important to remove reviews and what kind of positive impact that might have on your revenue and on your business. Thanks so much Absolutely. for your time today. Thanks, Klaus. See you later.